Right, in this video I'm going to show you how you can simply and easily make this new low-down camera rig. It's my new invention. And I've named it the Drop Shot Steady Low-Down Camera Rig. What it's for is for going out into the field, into the countryside or whatever, or anywhere really, and you use it with a gimbal and a camera to take ultra low to the ground videos and uh, pictures. So it can be used with virtually any type of gimbal and any type of camera. And like I said, it's dead easy to make because you make it from one of these. And on mine I'm using the Fiutech G6 Plus gimbal and the Nikon Key Mission Action Camera. And I've been out and about and got some stunning videos already with this one. The great thing is you can actually use it low to the ground like I say. But because it's made from an elbow crutch, you can adjust it so that you don't bend down at all. Also, because the Fiotech G6 Plus gimbal um, can be controlled from an app on the smartphone, I've mounted a smartphone on the side here so I can actually control the gimbal when I'm out. Plus the Nikon Key Mission um, action camera has a remote control here so I can actually take photos with the remote control or videos and also switch it to slow motion mode. And after I made it I found it to be perfectly balanced because you have the elbow clip here and the actual angle of it is excellent for walking along and taking the videos. You can hold it out the front, you can obviously tip it up to whatever angle you want with your gimbal because that will work like it does. And I find it um, one of the best bits of kit I've ever made. And being made of aluminium, it's super lightweight and, like I say, fully adjustable. Plus, you can actually take it in the half for transportation. Also, when you're out and about, you're not limited to low down shots because you can actually hold it like that and hold it up to whatever height you like, just like holding the gimbal in the normal position. And I do find actually holding this um, rig and using it much easier than actually holding the gimbal like this. My arm did actually ache a bit when I held the gimbal in the normal way. But when I go out and about with this one, I don't have any aching arm or back or anything. Another thing, you don't have to actually make the phone mount because you can buy them already made. These are smartphone adapters to go on telescopes or telescopic sites or whatever. And one of those simply um, fits on the side of the um, assembly here. Plus you have movement to actually move it round and you can actually even uh, fold it towards the front out of the way. And I bought a low cost smartphone to actually use with this one, so I dedicate it for the use of photography. It doesn't have a SIM card on it, it has a memory card in it. And then I've um, downloaded the app for Fiotech to actually use it with the gimbal. And you have an excellent control system on here, like a joystick, in which you can actually operate the gimbal and tilt it or whatever. You can use it in exactly the same way as the controls on the back of the gimbal. And then you have a reset button. So it returns it to normal, like that. And like I said, it's an excellent app and dead easy to use. And it really goes well with this um, rig. And using the app obviously saves you having to bend down and touch the controls on the actual gimbal, as does the remote control on the camera. So I hope you can see what a useful bit of kit it is, and in a minute I'll show you how easy it is to make it. It only takes a couple of hours to make, and if you want to, like I've done with mine, you can actually just spray it black with acrylic paint so it does actually look like a piece of photographic equipment rather than an elbow crutch. 
And what I like um, doing with mine, I actually like to take it through the woods and long grass or foliage or whatever, and I actually like switching to slow motion and it gets some excellent um, video like that. You can see the foliage folding back as you go through it. It makes the um, filming look like um, something out of a film or whatever. Plus I like to get down low down to animals so you actually see them at their own height. And like I say it gives a whole new perspective for video shooting and photography. And just before I go and show you how to make this on the Chinese mini lathe I'd just like to say something about these crutches. There's a literally thousands of these crutches discarded every year and that's because once the hospitals have issued them out they're not allowed to actually take them back in again. So like I say there's thousands of them discarded every year and they make great photographic um, equipment because um, they're lightweight aluminium plus they have the adjustment on the side there with the push buttons and they can actually be taken apart and I can actually go down my local recycling centre any day of the week and I'll find loads of these down there sometimes I've actually seen stacks of them down there so like I say if you've got the local recycling centre to pick one of these up and make one of these um, rigs then that's great but if not you can actually go on eBay and buy them at very low cost so now I'm turning down this stem shaft to actually go up inside the crutch and this one will actually screw onto the actual bracket here with the 8mm Allen bolt. I always use 6082T6 aircraft aluminium because it's nice to machine and you get very good finishes with it. And you can see the lovely finish on that aluminium. And before I take it out, I actually always check the um, part that's going to fit on the actual shaft. I take the tailstock off my um, mini lathe because I've got a um, system on it where it um, can just be loaded up with one hand and you don't have to um, try and move the actual nut round underneath 
to actually get it in position so it's really quick to take off and put on but I can see there that that's gonna fit really nicely so now I can actually take it out turn it around do a center drill and then drill down with the core diameter for an eight millimeter thread and then start the tap off in the lathe so to save time I've drilled it with the core diameter and now I'm putting the tap into it because it's a hole down to a certain depth I actually don't let the tap go down with the um, chuck turning with the motor I actually start it off by hand um, I actually pull the pulley wheel here you may have a handle I've shown how to actually make a handle for the Chinese mini lathe but I just pull the um, pulley wheel like that and start the um, tap off like that as soon as it's nice and square in the end there with a couple of threads I loosen the chuck off here pull back the tailstock and then take out the um, workpiece and finish it in the um, bench vise And in the crutch stem there is a little bit of a raised um, weld seam on the inside and you can just get a nice large file like that and just take most of the rough edge off of that one. And then that one should knock home. And it is actually nice to get a nice tight fit like that and um, you can actually use Loctite 638 if you want to but that one's good enough that's never going to come out unless I actually bang it from the other end so that's all right and then if you want to I'm going to do it with mine you can actually spray it with some acrylic paint or whatever I'm going to do mine black so that it gives it a whole new look so now the rig is all sprayed up black and to do that I just lightly rough this up with a bit of medium emery tape just um, do it in crisscross uh, manner and then spray it up and let it dry in the sun or whatever and then I get a piece of steel you can use aluminium if you want to I didn't have any so I used a piece of steel it's 130 millimeter long and 25 millimeter wide and five millimeter thick and the last um, 40 millimeter I had in a vise like that and then I used a pair of um, like an adjustable spanner drawers down over there and pulled it over to put the bend in it and I made the bend at about 15 degrees um, before I did that though I drilled it obviously for the 8 millimeter um, allen bolt and I drilled extra holes to lighten it plus I did the holes to actually fit the allen bolt so I can actually put it in various different positions so far I've only had to use the one position and this one just simply screws on the underside of the um, part that I've just machined and just nip that one up and it's got to be obviously in line with the handle at the other end and I forgot to mention that the holes on the front of the plate here are just drilled through for quarter inch and that's for the quarter inch UNC screw that goes through it and a quarter UNC thread is the standard tripod mount screw which the Feucek gimbal has on the underside here and what's on most cameras as well 
and obviously you can put one of these straight through and screw that into the gimbal and tie it onto this assembly but I actually found these screws here with this um, little fold out um, handle here to be very fiddly uh, when you're trying to do them up so what I did was make this assembly here and rather than make this whole assembly up with the screw thread and waste time there's a way around this um, to make it much easier what you do is get one of these screws here this little handle here you put um, the screw in a vise and then you use a pointed pair of pliers to bend that little handle open and pull it off and pull the pin out so you're left with just the head of the screw and I got a piece of 25 millimeter diameter aluminium bar I turned it, knurled it and did a decorative groove in here and then I drilled down to a certain depth a bit smaller than the diameter of the head of the screw and then bored it out to a depth which is about the thickness of that actual um, screw head and it is a nice fit on the diameter and then I got Loctite 63A and put it in the slot all around the diameter and in the bore there and then I just pushed that one home nice and square and let the Loctite 63A harden and Loctite 63A will go off in a few seconds if it's cold weather just use a gas torch just to warm it slightly and it's rock solid and it's a high strength adhesive so that screw won't come out of there again unless you wanted it to if you wanted it to you would have to heat this up so that you saw some vapor coming off and then you could actually pull that screw out so that's the way to actually break Loctite 638 but apart from that this screw will stay in there and it'll be nice and strong and that saves so much time in the workshop when you do things like that rather than thread cutting and making the whole assembly so that one goes in the underside there and then I got a piece of um, PVC uh, bar that one's about um, 40 millimeter in diameter I think and that one's obviously slightly larger diameter than the um, gimbal base this one just pushes down over that one because I've drilled it to a quarter inch and I've um, parted this off from a piece of bar, put a couple of chamfers on the sides there before I parted it off and I've parted it off to about five millimeter thick so that one pushes down over the screw thread and provides a base for the gimbal and then I cut a piece of rubber, very thin rubber you can use a bit of an inner tube or something like that but you can get some um, gasket seal rubber like that it's only about um, 30 thou thick and I cut that piece out with a sharpened pipe and a mallet and then I cut the um, bore in the um, centre there with one of those um, punches and that one's just a bit smaller in diameter than the quarter inch thread so that when it pushes down over the thread it locks that assembly on the um, rig like that so that when you unscrew it from the gimbal this won't fall out and get lost and then the gimbal is simply mounted onto that screw and having this collar makes it dead easy to actually lock up nice and tight And that assembly there with the PVC or the Delrin and the rubber also stops the gimbal from moving about when you tighten it up it sinks into that rubber and you can't actually twist it on the assembly um, easily so it holds it nicely in place. And I found the 15 degree angle on the plate here to be just right for my use. So that's the main part finished and next I mounted the phone on the assembly and I've already said I bought this from Banggood it's a smartphone adapter to actually fit a phone onto um, telescopes or whatever and it has nice protection for your phone and adjustment so you can actually put it into whatever position you want 
and then lock it up on the back. It's a very well made unit. And before I put the um, base part on, or before I actually um, slid the actual lower half of the um, rig up inside the um, shaft here, I put this onto the shaft. Now I found that this um, clamp here is a little bit big for this diameter here, so it doesn't actually lock on when you um, screw it down fully. So what I did was just increase the diameter a bit on the shaft here with some gaffer tape. I just wrapped a few uh, wraps around on the top part here. You could actually make a collar if you wanted to out of um, Delrin or PVC, but I don't see the point. Just wrapped some gaffer tape around that and that one locks down nicely on that. And then you can use the um, adapter here to position your phone on the rig. And to mount the remote control for the camera, I used the um, strap um, guides on the back of the remote there. You can actually put a strap, like a um, watch strap, so you can actually wear it on your wrist. But I've just threaded a cable tie through that one and put it around the handle here. It actually goes into the um, lower part, the diameter there, so it can't actually fall off. Plus, you can actually just turn it to whatever position you want. So you can have it on the top if you're using it or put it out of the way. Plus, I can still get to the battery compartment if I want to. So that's all very straightforward and easy. And because the rig is made out of an elbow crutch, like I said earlier, you have all the different adjustment. You have three holes on the top here so you can actually extend the elbow um, clamp part there or the rest, so you can actually take it up higher. And then you have 13 holes down the um, diameter here for adjustment, so you can actually extend the rig, which is excellent. If you want to move the um, extension quickly without it actually clicking into each different hole, you just press these buttons here, and then turn the assembly like that and then you can actually pull it all the way down without those buttons clipping home into those holes and you can even pull it right out so that you can put it in a case or whatever for transportation and on this lower part here this isn't holes this is just the paint where i sprayed it it's not worth actually spraying the internal part here because it'll actually get scratched off when you move it up and down i did shorten this lower section by five and a half inches to do that i pulled this plastic plug out here depressed the buttons on the side here and put a pair of pointed pliers down inside and pulled the spring mechanism up out of the way and then i drilled for the same diameter as the buttons there further down on the bench drill drilled right the way through and then put that spring assembly back in with a pair of pointed pliers just push it down and when it goes into the holes it'll click home and then put that plastic plug in and that was the right length for me the reason i cut the five and a half inches off is because it wouldn't actually push up that amount and it was still a bit long for me so five and a half inches was just right and the reason i did that obviously because it wouldn't actually push uh, right the way home or right the way up the um bore there it would only go to a certain distance and now it's sawed off i still use it with the buttons in the higher hole at the top here. And that is very important to actually get that um, to the uh, length that you need because you don't want to be in a position where you're struggling to lift the rig up to get it off of the ground. You need to have your arms straight when you're using it and it comfortably missing the ground. And then you have all these 13 different holes for extension anyway so like I say I'm up the top here but if I want to bring it down to make it longer I have all those different adjustments and that's how easy it is to make this simple camera rig and just one other thing before I finish I'd just like to say that you don't have to have a gimbal 
to use on this assembly if you don't want one. You can use cameras directly on the um, leg part here with the um, camera mount, tripod mount screw. And if you have like a waterproof action camera like the Nikon 170, you can get some really nice um, Chinese ones now, um, very low cost, which are just as good as the Nikon really. And this camera here is waterproof down to 10 meters. Now if I wanted to, I could just screw the cameras directly on the leg part there like that without the gimbal. So you could actually put any camera you like on this assembly. And then I could actually use the extension and lower the camera down in rivers or ponds to get some underwater shots. Plus it could also be used as a specialist camera rig tool for actually um, taking photographs in difficult to reach places like down manhole covers or drains. You could actually extend this and lower a camera down and get a good picture of whatever's inside. Plus you could also use it for surveillance work upside down up the other way with the camera on the base here. You could actually take photographs over hedges and fences easily with it.